let's talk about the Koch brothers. Taking over public universities, taking over public schools, now they're fighting for segregation. I, do you expect less from the Koch brothers? Okay, just when you thought they couldn't get any worse, the Koch brothers are like, oh yeah? Let's resegregate the schools. They're incredible. They're, it's amazing, first of all, how much influence they have just because of the mere fact that they're billionaires, multi-billionaires, right? But what they're fighting for now is to uh, resegregate schools in Wake County, North Carolina. Now, Wake County, North Carolina has a really interesting integration program where they have uh, their schools mixed with poor kids, rich kids. They, they want to make sure that you have children from all different backgrounds. So what they do is they make sure that only 40% of the school has students that qualify for government subsidized lunches. Okay, so, so they th come from poor backgrounds. Right, so this is really important because they're not actually doing this based on race at all. They're doing it based on income level, which yes. I love. That's, I think that's the right way to do affirmative action. I don't want to stigmatize different races. I, and there are a lot of poor white kids too, right? And so what you want to do is you want to create a mixed environment so that because if you ha concentrate all the poor kids in one school, it doesn't matter white or black, that school eventually winds up getting very little attention. And uh, good teachers leave that school, it gets less funding. We've seen this happen time and time again. That's why they created this program, and it actually was only created in 2000. And so far, people have considered it a, a stunning success. And you'll, you know, Brave New Foundation put together this amazing video where they show and the schools are integrated and people love it, et cetera. Now, I'm sure not everybody loves it, but uh, but it, it seems like it was a model of success in the country. So, of course, it had to be destroyed. And my part of my guess as to why they're doing it is not just based on race, but the Koch brothers believe in economic segregation. Yes, that's what this is all really about, okay? They, they want the economic segregation. They want the poor people to remain in the poor schools. They want the rich people to be in the rich schools. And they want to, you know, continue this class warfare that we're seeing in the country right now. And look, the Koch brothers are very, very savvy because they don't just do it for the short term. They do it for the long term. They want to change the way politics run in the United States. They want to change the way we do things in the U.S. and they want to go back. They want to go back to what we were doing in the 1960s where segregation was acceptable, you know? Right. Okay, so let me give you um, an example of uh, what they did exactly, how they influenced the school district. So um, Americans for Prosperity and the Koch brothers got together and they started uh, funding candidates, conservative candidates that wanted to run for the school board in Wake County. So after they used their funding and they used their money, all of a sudden, you see a conservative majority in the school district, in the school board. So what does the school board do? They start voting to stop uh, this whole uh, integration program. procedure. Program. And so now, think about that. Why does Americans for Prosperity care? They, they're the group funded by the Koch brothers, right? Like, why are they going to go into this local area and bring back segregation when they, you know, fight on national issues, etc.? Look, I got a couple of different theories on it. One is that... Look, you get the financial segregation, and so rich people get richer, which is like 98% of the Coke ideology, right? And we don't have, want to deal with the poor people. No, 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 no. Please get them away from our rich kids, right? The second thing is that if you have a concentration of uh, poverty, those public school systems get worse, and then they turn around and go, oh, you see, public schools can't work. You see, because we've got these terrible public schools in the poor areas, so what should we do? We should privatize the schools so we can make money off of them. Right, And what are they doing to make this happen? And oh, one other thing, it's exactly what Anna pointed out earlier. It sets people against one another. Exactly. Right. So you guys fight amongst yourselves while we take all the money out of the system. While we get our taxes lowered, so we save billions of dollars, you go fight amongst yourselves between the middle class and the poor and where your kids are going to go to school. But so in order to do that, what have they done? They've gone back to the same talking points that we went through in this country during the civil rights era about integration and, and not. Brave New Foundation has these amazing footage of the current candidates backed by Americans for Prosperity and old school, well, racist from the South. I, 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 we actually have a, a few examples of those videos, okay? So let's go to uh, video number 15 where you see the conservative and the liberal um, candidates for the school board uh, disagree about forced busing. Let's watch. For me, 
my opponent. We had forums and debates and she really pitched forced busing. The school board crossed the line was forced busing. Forced busing is absolutely a code word. It's a term busing used in the South by George Wallace. Segregation now, segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. The voters in Wake County and North Carolina have rejected uh, a forced busing policy. We are winning a battle against forced busing. L look, even if you're not racist, to use the same racist terminology that they fought, uh, you know, that the segregation is fought with, you would think, hey, have a little better tact. Unless, of course, that's exactly what you mean. And forced busing isn't the only thing. It's also neighborhood schools. That's another code word. Watch again from today and from before. My opponent, he just mainly talked about, he stressed neighborhood schools. Neighborhood schools, neighborhood schools, neighborhood schools. Neighborhood schools means we have our own schools and the blacks have theirs. So we heard loud and clear across this county people wanted to go to a neighborhood schools model. We should have our right to choose our our own neighborhood, our own neighborhood schools. He didn't talk about student achievement and helping all our schools get better. There are always ways to improve the education of our students. He would just read the script. We have too many students traveling long distance to attend high schools and high, high school classes in the schools in our districts that do not perform. It is eerie, man. And at the end of one of the articles on this, uh, you have one, somebody, a resident from North Carolina saying, hey, why don't these Midwesterner Koch brothers butt out of our business and butt out of our schools in the South, okay? It's uh, ironic that they've now turned that around and say, we don't need you agitators around. We were actually getting along great before you came in here and wanted to resegregate us and destroy our public schools. But again, it goes back to the number one problem that we have. We can't allow people who are millionaires and billionaires to influence every single aspect of society. And, and think about that. My last thought on this. Look, how are those two people that you saw on those tapes, the, the black lady and the white lady, they're sitting, sitting in the same kitchen, you know, they ran uh, uh, you know, for the school board. How are they going to keep up with Koch brothers financed candidates? You come in there and you spend a couple hundred thousand dollars, they're trying to win the thing with chocolate chip cookies and milk. They're going to get crushed. Okay? They don't have a chance. Or their only chance is you keep corporate money out of politics. If you don't do that, they're going to win every single goddamn race.